All right. Now, lecture about today. Please, don't look at your screens. Turn off the screens. This is important. Turn off the screens. We want to, this is a very quick lecture. We're not going to take much time. Screen off, screen off, screen off. Don't reboot the machine. Screen off. OK. Hashtags. When you see those hashtags over there, what do they mean? OK. Any line in C language that starts with a hashtag, it means you're actually talking to the compiler. It's not a C command. So anything that you are starting with a hashtag, OK, you're actually telling number sign. You're actually telling to the compiler, before you compile, do such and such. So compiler using the hashtags modifies, modifies your source code to whatever you ask for before it actually compiles it, literally. OK? Let me give you an example. You see this? This is a program that we have written the last, uh, last day that you, that you were here. Remember that? It's a bar thingy. Let me compile and run it. You see that? Three years later, four years later. So it actually, how long the bar would be? You see that? I'm going to do over here 20, wow, 23, and it's going to print the 23. All right? Remember that? So now take a look. I'm going to do this. I'm going to add a new item, and I'm going to call it he ha dot hu hu. OK, so that's a file, OK? So I have a file called he ha dot hu hu. And in that he ha dot hu hu, I'm going to put half of this. You see that? I just removed that and put it in he ha dot hu hu. Are we OK with this? Now I'm going to go in here and say include he ha dot hu hu. You see that? Does that look like a good program for you? Yeah, it is actually is. Yes. Because what it does, it simply, before compilation, it grabs hee dot hoo hoo and adds it where include is. What is hee dot hoo hoo? The missing half of the program. Therefore, the program is going to run. So it's no magic. Hashtag means do something before you do whatever you are to do. Like, and, it, and it runs perfectly. OK? So that's what it is. Remember that. OK? You are saying include. You live your. Why did I put double quotes here instead of less than and greater than around it? When you put less than and greater than around it, it means go pick it up from the standard place in the library of compiler, OK? Which is a, a, a directly called include. If you actually go to the, if you actually go to um, your, uh, let me see if I can find it and show it to you. Um, if you go to. Uh, I think it's uh, program files and then Visual Studio 14, I believe it is. It's VC and include. Voila. These are all the header files. So that standard input output thingy that you're saying is here. It just picks it up from here. These are all the header files. OK? So when you don't mention it where to, so if I did like this, it means it's in the directory of the include files of the compiler. But if I put this one, it means right here. Don't go anywhere else. <laughs> right beside the file, the, wherever it is. So, and I don't even need to have this one inside the, like it's, so I'm going to go in Solution Explorer. I'm just going to say remove. See, I'm going to remove this thing as if it's not even in, this, in the code. It's a file that just exists over there. When I say include, compiler simply says, OK, at this place, I'm going to pick it up, compile it. Life is beautiful. It runs perfectly, and everything's good. You follow what I'm saying? So no magic. That hashtag is conversation with the compiler. Now, another thing, so we, we covered that one, so we know what's going on, right? We understand what hashtags do and what actually include is. Include literally means copy, paste. It means copy the information uh, inside the file that I'm including paste it right here, and pa, it pastes over there. Then it starts to compile, OK?
Next thing. Uh, should I save this? Hmm? I specifically write he how dot who who so nobody asks that question. It can't be anything. And the compiler doesn't comply. It doesn't care. You put a name over there, it says load this file. That file is called he how dot who who. Now if who who means something in comp in C language, I don't know. But it literally doesn't mean anything. It's tradition to put dot h. So we know it's a header file. It has headers in them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yes. Uh, what's the difference between uh, hashtag and key versus uh, hashtag define? That's the next thing. Oh. All right. So, uh, da, 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 uh, alt F A. Zero one dash he ha who who dot c. I think I hope you remember this. Okay, so that's he ha who dot c. All right, now we're gonna go in here. Does it control z it? No, I have to open the other one. Actually, I only need this. Okay, this defined statement over here is something special, okay? What does it do? Please don't ask me what is that. I don't want to go into um, compiler directives. But what I, that's a trick with the defined statement. Defined statement is not usually used for that. What defined statement is, I actually explained to one of the students who come, came to the office and so I'm going to talk about, talk about it today. Have you ever done... Like you actually wrote, a, um, say, an email, and, and you're done with it, and you wrote she, and then after it's done, you found out, oops, the person is not a she, it's a he. So you had to fix it. So what did you do? You did a f search and replace. You said, Take, find all the she's and replace them all with he. You've done these things, right? Especially when you're copying from your friend and you want to change a few things, you just change, you know, search and replace and then give it to the prop. That's what you do all the time. So that's essentially what the defined statement is. Defined statement is this. I'm going to say integer a. a is set to abc plus def. In here, I'm going to say define a, B, C with three, define D, e, F with five. So what did I say? I said, compiler, before compilation, go through my source code. Any A, B, Cs you see, you replace them with C, with three. Any D, e, Fs you see, you replace them with five. As a result, it will be A is set to three plus five. Okay, and it does it before compilation, which means if there is an error over here, it's not going to tell you, it's not going to give you a message that ABC, something's wrong with ABC, because at the moment of compilation, there is no ABC. They're all replaced with three. It's literally search, replace. Are we okay with this? So... If I do this, now this may cause some trouble, so careful with it. That defines this all printf percent d, and I'm gonna put over here a. So that just, just to show what's going on. So that's gonna print five, but sorry, eight. Are we okay with this? Now, I'm gonna say define sum with A plus B, all right? Or B, B plus C, let's do it that way. B plus C, all right? Any problem with this? Now in here, I'm going to say int 
B set to 3, int C set to 4. And I'm going to say A is set to 2 multiplied by sum. And printf, again, percent DA. And return 0. Can you tell me what is the output of line 13? What do you say? 14. How did you come up with 14? I think it will be rubbish. No, it's not rubbish. It's actually a beautiful answer. No rubbish. Yes. Pardon me? Unlike. Yeah, I'm printing A. So A becomes 2 multiplied by sum. And before compilation, sum is replaced with B plus C, right? So what's going to be the output? Can somebody tell me? Pardon me? Pardon me? No, no, it's come on. There's no trick behind it. My friend over here said 14. So he said it's B plus C. Sum is B plus C. B plus C is 3 plus 4. That is 7. 2 multiplied by 7 is 14. I want to know if you agree with that. No. It's, 10. it's 10. Why? Again, remember, it just does a search and replace before compilation. So it's going to do A is set to 2 multiplied by B plus C. Because multiplication happens before plus, first 2 will be multiplied by 3, 6, then it will be added by 4, that is 10. So you can make mistakes like that easily with the final statement. When you do like this, it looks like it's sum. And everybody would agree that it's sum because it's a very stupid mistake. If we don't understand what define does, define doesn't do an action. It's nothing other than search and replace. Why do we use it? Because sometimes when you write a program, you want to do certain things for certain values, but those things may change every 10 years. And after 10 years, you forget, where did you use those values? So instead, you do a define at the top, and instead of that value, you use the define keyword that you have. So you use it everywhere in your program. And 10 years later, they're going to tell you, OK, that value that was 6, I want it to be 12 now. You don't need to worry about where I use that thing. Where in my code I have to go change all the 6s to 12? You just go to the beginning of the program, you change your defined statements from 6 to 12, and recompile the code. As soon as it gets recompiled, all the things that were 6 will change to 12. Are we OK with this? OK, so that's all it's about. And there is nothing else. So define and uh, hashtag, what does it mean? It's pre-compiled commands that you're talking with the compiler. Compiler does something for you before compilation begins. Are we all clear about this? Pardon me? What is the, literally, please do not, do, please listen to what I'm saying. Define is literally search and replace. It doesn't mean anything. It literally means search and replace. Okay, <laughs> satisfied? Okay, so it literally that means that it doesn't. I could I could do this. I can say I can say define um, value to be x y z, and then in here I'm gonna say plus value. Okay, when I compile this thing. I'm not going to get an error message for value. So if I actually compile this program, the error will be identifier x, y, z is undefined. Because when it compiles, there is no value. It's x, y, z. 
it gives you the error on what it's compiling. And because that value is gone, it's replaced with whatever it was, the error message is on it. So you will see that you're, you do like this, you come to output, you click on this one, and it says XYZ undeclared identifier. You come over here, it says, where the heck is XYZ? I don't have any XYZ in that line. What does it mean XYZ? Because before compilation value was changed to XYZ. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay too? So, okay, goody, goody. All right, so uh, let's take this off. I don't want this value thingy to be here. Is that? If it was here, the error would be on x, y, z and not value. Okay, so let's just compile it, make sure it runs. Okay, 10. Careful with some and what it means. What is expands to? All right. Compile one more time. All right. I don't think there's anything else. Let me just pause recording, and if, if I have to do something else, then I'm going to. So what is a for loop? Really, what a for loop is? A for loop is for, uh, a quick way of, to do repetition. If you want to know, if you want to do something several times, that's what a for loop is. So do it quickly. So if you have a counter, C and T, you quickly say for, this is a formula, for C and T set to zero, C and T less than whatever number of repetition. So define, uh, I'm not going to do define. If I want it to happen 10 times, I put 10. And in here, I'm going to say C and T plus plus. Now in here I'm going to say hello, uh, printf hello. Or printf, yeah, hello. And I'm going to go to new line. So as soon as you see this, what do you say? Hello is getting printed 10 times. That's what it's for. But what is the equivalent for this, literally, in a while loop? Literally, what this thing can be replaced with a while loop? This is what it is. People, please pay attention. Very important moment of your life. In for loop, this happens only once before the loop begins. So for loop has three statements. One, two, three. Please pay attention. For loop has three statements. One, two, three. These three statements are three separate statements. This is not in one line. So that plus plus rule that we had in CNT that happens after the line doesn't apply here. That's what's weird about for loop. For loop is actually three statements, which the first part happens once before the loop. The second one happens every single time before the loop. The last one happens every single time at the end of the loop. So if I want to convert that to a while loop, it is essentially this, C and T set to zero, while this condition gets checked every single time before the loop, which means it's the condition of the while loop. And then you have print hello, or whatever you have, and right after that, at the very end of the loop, that CNT++ is going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, these two are identical beings. Absolutely no difference. That's why I like you to do it with a while loop, not to have some combo that you don't know really what happens with it. Okay, remember, these two, line 8 to 12, and line 5 to 7, 
identical. No difference. The assembly compilation, the, the translation of these two to CPU code are identical. No difference whatsoever. Okay? So unless you know what you're doing with a for loop, I suggest use a while loop, not a for loop. So you actually see what you're doing. Yes? I told you, during the whole semester, wherever you see four, throw it in garbage. So what if you use it? Perfect. If you use it, fine. I'm just letting you know because for people who are just doing programming and they have problem using repetition and loops and stuff like that, adding another mystery to an already existing mystery is just a stupid thing, I believe. So we don't need to know this for loop thingy. Just deal with the while loop. Get done with it. If later on you want to change it, that's how it is. OK? That's all. So if I run this, I'm going to get two hellos. So in here, I'm going to say percent %d dash. In here, I'm going to put i. So you know what the values of the thing is. And I'm going to do the exact same thing in here. Oh, not i, c, n, t. Yeah, so if I run this, the outcome would be exactly the same, 0 to 9 and 0 to 9. Okay, 10 times each. It works exactly the same with no difference.